Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I'm going to be telling you about the exhibit at Gorilla Gallery I went to and talking to you guys about each of its accompanying fragrances. This will be a very long video, so if you are interested in this event, learning more about these fragrances and the gallery in and of itself, and like to sit through long videos, then keep watching. I am going to be time stamping all the different rooms and fragrances below. If you do not want to sit through a long video, there's only one or two fragrances you are interested in, you can definitely jump ahead and not have to sit through a long video. The reason why this is going to be long is not only am I going to be getting into each of the fragrances, I'm going to be getting into the inspiration of the fragrances, as well as the accompanying art room that went with this. Now, Simon Constantine is the nose behind um, Gorilla Perfumes, and Hal Samples is the artist that was kind of the inspiration behind this volume of fragrances for Gorilla Perfume. So I'm going to be calling them Hal and Simon from this point on. I'm going to get comfy. Hello. Now, although Lush was very generous to send me to Dallas for this event, none of my reviews or my thoughts on any of this will be biased. So you guys know I am a huge fan of Gorilla Perfumes. Uh, Lust is one of my absolutely favorite perfumes. It's phenomenal, sexy, spicy jasmine. I really enjoy it. But I'm going to be removing my bias of enjoying Gorilla Perfumes and also the fact that they sent me when I come into this review. Now most of these fragrances I only really sampled briefly, so I'm not even going to be able to give you a full first impressions because I was smelling a lot of things throughout this entire time. But I did take a few notes and I am able to at least give you guys a bit of a first impression on the opening and what I thought about the fragrance in general without it really touching my skin. I purchased two bottles. I was given a bottle, which is very nice, and I'll get into that when I get into the specific rooms. But I also wanted to let you guys know if there's any specific fragrance you want to review on, I am not opposed to getting more. I really enjoyed all of these. So if there's anything specifically you want to review of or you want a more in-depth um, analysis of, I'll either answer your comments below or I will film a separate video for that. Again, a humongous thank you to Lush Cosmetics and Gorilla Perfumes for sending me to this event. I never thought it would happen. So yeah, let's get into the video. One other thing, I did take some video and there are some photographs. Because the video, there was very loud music blaring in the background. I do not want this video to get flagged for copyright infringement. So later on this week, I'm going to be writing a full in-depth blog post on the experience. Um, it would have given me time to wear the fragrances I got more in depth so I can write a little bit more thorough reviews on those. Those will probably be up latest Monday. So as soon as that article is live, I will link it below. Um, but until then, I won't have anything. So this video is going up on the 26th of October 2017. So it'll probably be up early um, November. But that's why you won't see any photos and that's why you won't see any video because I do not want this video flagged. Anyway, let's get into the review. What I'm going to do is I'm going to describe the exhibit. Um, the rooms is what they were called. Some rooms had one fragrance tied to them. Some rooms had more than one, like two. Some of these fragrances you could only purchase in the gallery. Some of these fragrances were actually only created specifically to experience in the gallery. You can't even purchase them. And some of these are going to be available very soon online and worldwide. So what I'm going to do is explain the exhibit, explain the fragrance, and give you a price breakdown, and then let you know if this is something you can get or not. So the first room is called Rose Road from Damascus, and you walk in, uh, they have a little pop-up boutique, and the first room you see off to the left is kind of like this little gravel path, and there's like bushes and flowers, um, and it kind of looks like a security checkpoint somewhere, and then there's a video playing. Um, and then as we're learning about this room, this was when Simon was traveling in Syria, and he was really um, inspired and kind of let down... Um, overwhelmed by the security checkpoints in Syria. So um, this is uh, after I let you guys know what I think I'm gonna read you the official um, blurb about this. Um, this is inspired by Simon's travels through war and torn Syria on an ingredient buying trip. 
Experiencing checkpoints guarded at gunpoint and, take, and talking to refugees about their flight really brought home the reality of how much the world has changed. So this was definitely something that was very personal. This is definitely something that is very political. And this is definitely something that hit home to him. And so the fragrance in and of itself is Road to Damascus. I have it right here. It's one of the ones I bought. Um, it's $109, so basically $110, $109.95 for one ounce. Um, and it's got bitter orange and rose, and it's really a very masculine rose fragrance. I like the fact that it has a lot of heft, it's very aromatic, and it's very bitter, obviously you would hope. But the citrus and the rose really works together. It's probably one of the most unisex rose fragrances I have ever smelled. I really enjoyed this fragrance a lot as a fragrance, and I thought it was a very powerful um, inspiration behind a very beautiful fragrance so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick this up also because it was a gallery exclusive so this is a beautiful fragrance and it was the first fragrance that we got to try in um, the room and experience and it kind of set the mood for the entire exhibit now this wasn't so much of a political um, art exhibit it's more of like the um, inspiration behind most of these pieces was personal experiences between either Simon or Hal. And as we get more into the exhibit, we get more into Hal and less into Simon. But the first few deal with Simon. And so Road to Damascus was a very powerful little fragrance that I instantly fell in love with. And I thought it was something I wanted in my collection. Next up, we're going to room two, cardamom coffee. Now there's two fragrances in this room, obviously cardamom coffee, and then there was a very specific fragrance just created for this room. You could only smell it in that room, which is sad because I really wanted to buy it. It was really nice. So I'm gonna get into cardamom coffee and then I'll kind of at the very end briefly describe the other fragrance. This room was kind of a tent. It was very opulent. There was tapestries on the walls. There was a little table. There was some flatbread and some um, some dipping um, spices and oil to eat. Um, one thing I will say about each of these experiences is that it was definitely more than one sense. Obviously smell and sight to see the art exhibit, but some of it was taste, some of it was sound, some of it was just, it was really quite spectacular how everything kind of worked together. So this room was cardamom coffee and it was actually inspired by when Simon visited a Syrian refugee camp and how the um, the people there were just, their hospitality was amazing. They were so just nice and genuine and giving, even though they had nothing to give. And he was just really touched by that entire experience. And it kind of, and this fragrance is kind of inspired by the spiced coffee that he drank. So the, um, the inspiration is spicy cardamom and, and rose recreate the warm hospitality Simon was shown at a refugee camp by people who had lost most of their belongings. Um, it's supposed to be kind of like a sitting room, a Lebanese sitting room. Uh, so it has rose, cardamom, um, and olive leaf in this fragrance. And it is the one that I chose for my free bottle. We were allowed, they were very generous and on top of sending us, letting us choose a bottle to take home as well. And this is what I chose for my bottle. Now the price of these bottles for the smaller size is um, $77. The large size is $155. I've got this one because I knew I was going to wear it. When we first came in, right before we were doing the um, room setup, we kind of walked around and sprayed everything. And I specifically sprayed on this one because I really wanted to try it. I was most interested in this one out of the entire group, just based on the notes. I like the idea of specifically olive leaf. It's supposed to pay homage to the olive oil. And it also just kind of really helps us be more aromatic and plays really nicely and kind of um, fights with the cardamom but in a very pleasant way. It's a really beautiful fragrance, you guys. This one is absolutely gorgeous. Um, they think this is gonna be a bestseller. I think this is gonna be a bestseller. Just a really gorgeous fragrance in general. Now, the other fragrance that went around with this room was, I'm gonna read it because I mispronounce it, <laughs> is uh, Menage Zatar. Um, product note, come and experience the scents firsthand. This was very aromatic. It was very kind of rich and spice, not spicy. There was a tang to it. It was really quite beautiful. Inspired by Lebanese flatbread, which also shared with uh, Lebanese flatbread, which was also shared with Simon during this trip. Now this is not for sale, not at the gallery, not anywhere. And I kind of was talking to the um, fragrance manager or the lead, and I was like, "If you ever have, if you ever sell this, let me give you my PayPal because I will wear it." It was beautiful.
beautiful beautiful fragrance and when we were smelling that that's when they passed around the flat bread with the dipping oil it was really cool not like oh so delicious even though it was really delicious it's nice to experience again different sensory smell touch taste really really cool this is one of my favorite rooms next room we're going into is i'm home now this room was basically kind of like a kitchen um, breakfast nook kind of area from the 50s very geometric kind of this browns and rusty colors in the um in the wallpaper there's a little um board that we could write what home meant to us uh, there is a, a stove with a pot on it and a little table with like toys and a dollhouse. Now to s experience this fragrance, I'm home, we got to actually smell the fragrance in the pot. So they would lift up the top of this pot on this oven and that's when you would smell this fragrance. And I thought that was so cool because this fragrance is a gourmand fragrance and it is kind of supposed to be reminiscent to home baking and I loved it. So I'm Home starts at $50 and it goes up to $100 and then it's is benzoin, vanilla, and cocoa powder. Um, it's very creamy, it's very sweet, very heady, really delicious fragrance. If you like gourmands, you'll probably really enjoy this. And I thought it was just made better on the way we were able to smell it. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. I didn't pick this up because this is one you will be able to purchase online and in boutiques. And I figured I would wait until they were available online to get it. But this is one I'm definitely interested in checking out and getting. Um, so the other fragrance in this room was Amelie May. And this is kind of like the table setup. If you guys didn't know, Imogen Rose was his oldest daughter. And Amelie is his youngest daughter. So he created a fragrance specifically for his youngest daughter. And if I am incorrect, please correct me. But I also think that Imogen Rose is going to be discontinued, which is kind of sad. So it's a beautiful fragrance. But Amelie May is like lavender and ylang ylang and it's this beautiful floral uh, bouquet that's not too sweet it's not too juvenile it's just really quite a stunning fragrance I really enjoyed it a lot um, and so it's going to be one I will also seek out and maybe purchase in the future and I believe the price for that is a little bit more affordable than some of the other ones it starts at $40 and it caps off at 80 so that was the room I'm home and I thought it was really cozy it was really sweet it was kind of cool how everything was set up and the fragrances in that room were beautiful that room four is the secret garden this was such a cool room and I kind of am kicking myself for not getting one of these bottles because it was just really nice so basically it was a wall with this beautiful floral wallpaper and the wallpaper was scented so you would go up sniff the wallpaper to get an idea of this fragrance and there was like actual grass on the ground and just a little video playing of someone's garden and this is supposed to be um reminiscent of simon and his permaculture garden at his house and we learned that there's a lot of gardens like this throughout lush and sometimes when people are hungry during lunch and they want some more tomatoes and they're solid they'll go out and grab a tomato from the garden like it's really quite an interesting awesome experience um an idea so this room was really beautiful I loved this fragrance the reason why I didn't get this one has mostly to do with the fact that there were so many things I really liked and this was one of them that as much as I adored it and um, there were other ones I wanted I liked a little bit more but I am kind of sad I didn't get this because it is really quite beautiful and the secret garden is one of my favorite books um, so the notes in this are Osmanthus and Mortel, um, so it's really sweet, if you guys don't know, those are like kind of like hay, sweet, grassy florals, and what we noticed too, and Carlos, Brooklyn Fragrance Lover, he noticed too when he smelled the wallpaper, it kind of smelled a little bit like maple syrup or molasses, so it had this like kind of deep sweet sticky notes to it underneath all the beautiful florals so really a stunning fragrance absolutely beautiful and the entire experience to actually be able to go up and smell it on the wallpaper was kind of like that scene from Willy Wonka where they're like tasting the wallpaper that was really really cool now this again is only sold at the gallery and a bottle of it is $150 so it was one of their more expensive ones but I definitely think that it was worth the price tag room five this is where we start to get into Hal's um Hal's samples this is where we start to get into his area of fragrances we've done Simon's 
How was such a delight, you guys. I love meeting other artists, people who are exuberant and passionate and just creative and energetic. And he was all of those things. He was wonderful. He was wearing this like entire suit covered in Union Jacks. He just had a great charisma and sense of humor about him. And you could really tell the passion he had for his craft and for fragrances and also the respect he had for Simon and just the collaboration that they had he really enjoyed. Generally, it was a huge treat. We all enjoyed Hal very, very much. All of us really enjoyed him. So this is when he kind of took over the uh, tour. Before this, it was Lush um, people who were talking to us about Simon's vision and things like that. So this room, room number five, was Sweet Grandma. And basically what this room was is that it was kind of like a tribute to his grandmother, somebody he was very close to, was his best friend, was this beautiful, elegant, just sophisticated woman that he grew up with and absolutely loved and supported him. And he was talking with Simon and Simon was just kind of asking him questions about his grandmother. And um, he came at him with this fragrance and how was just blown away almost to tears by how similar and how inspired this fragrance was to his grandmother. So it's just a really beautiful fragrance. Um, I don't remember if I saw it for sale in the gallery, but I know it's definitely not available um, outside of the gallery. It was just a really beautiful room. There was a TV and a chair and Polaroid and pictures of his grandmother everywhere. And it was just so sweet, such a fantastic room. So the fragrance in and of itself is rosewood, um, jasmine. And then there's a note in there that he kind of specifically mentioned that it wasn't specifically this note, but it was supposed to be very reminiscent of this note. But he remembers when he was younger, just like spending his days, just like coloring and playing on his grandmother's carpet and how she used that white deodorizer on the carpet to clean and how he just remembers that smell. And there was kind of that smell in the background, which I thought was so cool. So Sweet Grandma was one of the, my favorite rooms just because of how sentimental it was and the fragrance in and of itself was really nice. This next room, room 6, I am Mesh, is something very personal to Hal and it was an interesting experience and I really enjoyed it but it also kind of left me a little bit of it with a little bit of anxiety and I'll let you know why at the end of my just talking about it. I am Mesh basically, um, Hal had a mesh inserted or to fix a hernia he had and it caused him a lot of pain and discomfort and anxiety and there's been a lot of bad things going around with mesh inserts for hernias. This is definitely one of those rooms that was inspired by that part of his life that was in pain and in turmoil and he was just unhappy. And so basically what we did is there was this like room that was blue and there was just mesh and um, cloth everywhere and it was a little bit cold. And you just kind of walked through the room and it was supposed to symbolize um, putting all that behind you and starting anew. So he had it removed um, and then he had a little bit of nerve damage. So he had the nerves or like there's scar tissue um, around the cluster of nerves. So he had that removed. And then all of a sudden it was kind of like he had like a clarity. He could live his life a lot freer. And it was just this entire fragrance and room was inspired by that point in his life. And the reason why I have a little bit of anxiety of this is because my dad, like a year or two ago, had a hernia and he had this mesh put in. And I've heard so many people talk bad things about this and I love my father and I have anxiety when anybody in my family is in pain or not happy and I'm just kind of like, oh my dad. And I called my dad or like I talked to my dad when I got back. I'm like, I heard about this thing with this mesh. You need to call your doctor. I was just so worried about him. This fragrance was one of the fragrances that was sold exclusively at the gallery and it was really beautiful. It has geranium, sandalwood, and cypress oils. It was very fresh and just really just a beautiful, um, it's hard to describe this fragrance because to me geranium and cypress don't sound like they would go together, but they actually go together quite well. It was just a really beautiful fragrance. It wasn't one that I myself wanted to pick up, but I, th I forget, I think a few people ended up purchasing it or getting it. It was really, really nice, and I thought that it was a perfect, um, perfectly summed up, and if you were going to smell this experience, it worked really well. So overall, it was just a really nice fragrance. I really like the cypress in it. Cypress doesn't pull well on my skin, if you guys don't know, which is why I didn't end up picking it up, but it actually was really nice to smell. I love the geranium in it, and the sandalwood was very prominent too, so it was just a, overall a really nice fragrance. It was probably one of the most fun, and it was Self Esteem Machine. Now this fragrance is $50. It's only available in body spray. 
spray formats online, some shops and in the gallery, so you can't get it any other way than body spray. But this room, there was like a LED lit floor and there was like a silent disco, so we were all wearing headphones and dancing and we were taking funny videos and pictures and it was just so much fun. And that's pretty much what the inspiration behind this room was, was just kind of letting go and just being in the moment and having a lot of fun. And I really like this room a lot. I definitely enjoyed embarrassing myself by dancing. Uh, yeah, so it was pretty great. Um, the specific fragrance is um, vanilla mandarin grapefruit. So it's one of those kind of like sweet, delicious, creamy of uh, citrus fragrances that work really well on um, daytime fragrances if you're looking for something that's really nice and light and delicious but has a bit of brightness to it. So I know sometimes vanilla uh, lemon or vanilla citrus can come off a little bit cakey, like cake. Uh, this one wasn't so much. I think the grapefruit actually helped balance that out a little bit, but it was a really nice fragrance. The last four rooms is where it started to get really powerful for me, and I think a lot of other people too. Um, a little bit about Hal. He actually does what I almost would consider like he's a photographer and an artist, but he also does filmography, and he would actually befriend um, homeless people and just learn their stories and share their stories and film their stories. So these last um, two, three rooms, aside from the last last one, which is, uh, I'll get into that when we get to there, is talking about uh, the friends that he's made and the stories that they um, have told him and taught him. Um, and one of the things that he said was life on the streets, um, for us, it's, it's really easy for us to stay alive and healthy, but most of his friends have passed. And part of the hernia thing was when he got his hernia is when he learned that one of his dear friends had passed and he was just screaming so loudly that it just caused this this issue with him and the IMS. So everything kind of played together and came full circle. And so his passion and his love for these people who deserve nothing but um, sympathy and compassion and empathy and the fact that he showed them respect that most of society doesn't show, I thought was a very good judge of his character, a good representation of the type of person that Hal was. And I feel a lot of us felt very um, grateful and happy and just moved by these next few rooms. So the first one we're going to talk about is Tank Battle. Now this is, you kind of walk past the disco and there's this huge like concrete, what looks like a concrete slab, or like not slab, but dome. And it's supposed to represent a water tank. And what this is, is how was traveling with one of his friends and they got off at a bus stop and this homeless guy came up to him and said, you're gonna make a video about me. You're gonna make me famous. You're filming me, you and that guy. And how being just the genuine good-natured uh, spirit that he was was like you know yeah so they like went to his where he lived which was in this water tower and that's where the outside of this um, part is so the tankless part and to smell the fragrance you actually went up and smelled the tank the entire thing was sprayed with the fragrance so that you could smell what it smelled like and it was really cool um, and there was a graffiti on the outside, and I'll get more into the graffiti when we go into the inside because that was very important. That is an important point in the story, guys. Do not forget the graffiti. Do not forget for the forget the graffiti. But the uh, the tank itself had like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Security cameras and stuff is really quite interesting. So in and of itself, it's. Um, sweet notes of bubblegum and a blend of patchouli, labdomen, and clove. So it's supposed to smell like somebody who lives on the street. So the bubblegum represents the, um, the the bubble gum on the ground that you would find on the ground. And then the other mix of notes are supposed to just be kind of more animalic, not so much animalic, but like musky and just kind of represent this type of life that these people live. It's a very sweet fragrance, actually. It was a very beautiful, wearable fragrance, and I just like the fact that it was supposed to represent something that people would turn their noses at, and then when you smelled it, it just smelled like something that people would gravitate towards. I kind of really like the juxtaposition of that. Now, this cost $70, and this is only available at the gallery, and it's never been available before. This is another favorite amongst a lot of us that went there. I didn't pick up a bottle of it. I'm not the hugest fan of bubblegum scents, it's not my thing, 
but I definitely can see a lot of beauty in this fragrance. Again, not my favorite. I don't like bubblegum, but it's not heavy on the bubblegum. It actually had a really nice balance between um, that sweet candy-like sticky bubblegumness with the clove and the labdamum and patchouli. It's really quite a successful fragrance. And I also really like the way that you experienced it, which is kind of getting close and personal with the water tank. This next room is called Rentless, and I actually have experience with this fragrance. One of you guys sent me this, a little decant of it, and I have been babying the crap out of that thing because it's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. You know who you are who sent it. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to get into this room. Now this room, I feel, is when you really kind of everything came full circle. Like everything came full circle for me for this room. So I'm probably going to go way into this room. So you walk around this crazy, um, just concrete, plain um, replica of a water tank. And you go in and it is this beautiful, opulent, like eclectic, found object room. And basically what um, Hal was saying is that his friend, since he lived in L.A., that a lot of people in L.A. would just toss some of the nicest stuff, expensive stuff, would just throw it away. And what his friend would do is he would go collect it, and he actually made a, a house filled with trinkets and expensive rugs. And he had created this huge mural across his water tank that said Cloud Nine, just because that's where everybody wants to be, and had really created this really powerful place to live and I just remember how being like oh, this is great and you know and it was just really powerful and really extraordinary and apparently what his friend wanted to be his entire life was famous so going back to the graffiti he was in his house and um, I'll get into what rentless means in a sec he was in his house and um, he heard somebody doing graffiti outside and he wasn't quite certain what was happening. He didn't know if the people were nice or mean, so he kind of stayed there. And it turned out the person doing the graffiti was Banksy. So he comes home one day and his tank is gone. His home is gone. Someone had taken it to sell because Banksy had done graffiti artwork on this water tower. And so he had lost his home. So I think Banksy created a play for him. I know that he now has a house. He's famous now. And he was saying something like, you know, I've always wanted this my entire life, but I don't know what to do. He sleeps on the floor of his apartment because that's what he's used to. And the term rentless actually comes with the fact that he didn't consider himself homeless. He just said he was rentless because he had a place to live that was really special. And this is when a lot of us were kind of like, oh, oh my gosh, because it was such a powerful story. It's something that a lot of us can relate to in return in terms of the grass is always greener on the other side. You definitely can experience, you can get everything that you want and realize that maybe your life was better when you didn't have all that. And so it was really, really powerful. It's a really beautiful room. Um, just everything about it was just stunning. The story was really moving. I loved the way everything looked. And just overall, the fact that this guy comes up to you and says, you're going to make a movie about me and you follow him into his water tower and you, and you basically come and experience that. I mean, that must have been so incredible for Hal and his friend. And this person ended up being one of his best friends. It was the best man at his wedding. I mean, generally, like, they created a really special bond with each other. And Rentless is supposed to be that fragrance. Now, this fragrance is um, for a smaller bottle, it's $50. For a larger bottle, it's $100. I think that's a really good price. Again, I've been wearing this fragrance off and on for a bit because one of you guys sent me one and it's so good. Such a beautiful fragrance. So the product notes are grapefruit, tonka, patchouli, labdamum. It's just something warm about it. There's something musky and malty, but the grapefruit just kind of gives it a bit of brightness. It's really a beautiful scent. This fragrance right here and um, Sweet Garden or Secret Garden are the two that I saw people who were part of the event or, you know, who are experiencing the event, not just the people who are brought in who are bloggers, but also people who are part of press, just really just gravitating towards and loving and just, just as a fragrance, how it smelled, just running towards. So I think this is going to be a huge popular fragrance like Cardamom Coffee. And the story behind it is absolutely beautiful. This room was kind of a movie and it's black currant 
Angel. And this is where we got to see some of the films that Hell had been making about some of his friends. Um, there was a guy who was played the harmonica. It was just generally overall a really awesome experience. I don't really know if I can completely put into words the cinema experience other than the juxtaposition between the sound and the animation and just the people talking and their experiences and their wisdom, which is really quite fantastic. I enjoyed this room a lot, but it's really hard for me to kind of articulate the room. But the fragrance itself is Gaiac Wood, Osmanthus, Black Currant, um, woody, fruity, tangy. If you guys know Black Currant, it can get kind of tangy, a little bit sour. It's a very strong fragrance. This was probably my least favorite fragrance out of the entire collection. It wasn't bad. It was actually really nice. I just thought the Black Currant was a little bit too strong for me. But overall, it was a really nice fragrance, and if you like fruity fragrances, if you like tangy fragrances, if you like um, woody uh, fragrances like that, because it was like a woody, tangy, fruity fragrance, this would be really beautiful, and I know people enjoyed it. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but generally, overall, as a fragrance, it was really nice, um, and I believe this one is spe ex specifically sold at the gallery and it was $70 for a bottle. My last room was something also really really nice and this was um, What Would Love Do? And this was kind of when it didn't come completely full circle but it was just really wonderful because this is basically Hal has love letter to his wife. His wife like him is an artist, very compassionate, very loving, very caring. And what she would do is write people messages and leave it for them. So he said that they were at a Starbucks and there was this woman who was cleaning the floors and she was waiting there longer than Hal just wanted um, so she could give her this letter of encouragement and just be uplifting and such a beautiful person. And so basically what this room was was basically a fragrance inspired by his wife and his love for his wife. And it was just, just hear him talk about with such pride and admiration and love about um, his partner was just really spectacular. I mean, a lot of times you hear people talk about how much they admire and respect their husband or wife. And you can see people who say it and it's kind of like, on repeat, like, I love my wife, I respect my husband, you know? And you know that they do, but they say it so often that they just kind of get, you know, lost in the words. And it's another thing to see someone's eyes sparkle and light up because of their partner and who the type of person that their partner is. And we didn't get to meet her. I would love to meet her. But I have a feeling that they're both the type of people that bring out the best in each other. So they probably just constantly just have a beautiful relationship. I think it's really spectacular. And we got to write down on the board what love was to us. And overall, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Um, I do have a little, um, what would love do, a solid perfume that they gave us. It's really nice. There's something really kind of nutty and sweet about this. This is one I will definitely be buying a bottle of. I didn't get it because I had seen this and I was like, I'll wear through the solid perfume a little bit, but I'll pick up a bottle and you can. This is one that will be available um, it starts off at $37 for a small bottle and $75. Um, beautiful, again, stunning fragrance. This has um, tangerine, benzoin, lavender. It's just like, you guys, it's so good. You get all of that. You, you can pick up each one of those notes separately, and then they just come together for this really delicious. I wouldn't say it's gourmandy, but it definitely smells delicious. Beautiful fragrance. And just the story behind it was beautiful, and just everything about it was spectacular. So that is the art exhibit that we went to and I will show you the other fragrance that I purchased. The other fragrance that I got was kind of a sweet fragrance. It was Candy Leg. I'm going to be doing a full review on this very soon. Um, it's a discontinued fragrance which is why I got it because it was a discontinued fragrance. Um, it had one that I tried before and I really liked um, a long time ago um, and it's called Stand Alive. And it's just really nice. It's sweet. It's kind of like candy floss on the skin. But there's just something about it that just plays really nicely on my skin. And so I was wearing this and smelling it. And I was kind of like, yeah, I'll pick up a bottle of this too. I got this instead of Secret Garden. And I kind of wish I had gotten Secret Garden. 
but I didn't, so you yeah, I got this card here, but it's really beautiful. I'm not kicking myself, because if I had gotten Secret Garden, I would have been upset if I didn't get this, so it's like tomato, tomato, grass is greener, really beautiful fragrance. This is the other one I got. So from the gallery exclusive, I picked up Road from Damascus, beautiful, um, very woody, um, unisex rose fragrance and cardamom coffee I got a big one of because I know I'm gonna be wearing the hell out of this one because it's amazing and this is really beautiful too and then I have what would love do as a solid perfume and I will definitely be picking up a bottle of that once it is available I do want to share with you guys how they gave us samples when we um, came in so that we could try them and this is how I tried a few of other things so this is kind of like a little soap uh, wash sheet so it's a little soap that you wash your hands with and these are scented with the fragrances and the names of the fragrances are printed this is a really cool way to sample the fragrances although I kind of wish I had spray samples that's just me but I am gonna have a little giveaway for you guys so I have some of the samples from the um from fragrances from the event. So I have, let me see, I have I'm Home. This is a beautiful, delicious one. I have Cardamom Coffee. This is beautiful. I have Amelie May. Again, you'll see what I mean when you smell this about what I was talking about, about how it kind of being like the floral notes in it and how it plays. I can't speak words. I've been talking so much. And this one is What Would Love Do? Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. I dropped that on my lap and not in the bag. So this is these will be sent to one winner. Um, the winner of uh, the um, giveaway will be international. So all you have to do below um, is just be a subscriber to my channel and let me know in the comment section below which one of these fragrances really excites you the most which one would you like to try and I will be more than happy to send these to you deadline guys. for this giveaway will be November 10th enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed this um, experience I was so happy and honored to be able to go to this event it was such a powerful exhibit it was such a wonderful experience I got to hang out with Carlos and Sebastian meet some amazing people overall I was just it was so so great um, so I do hope that you guys liked this video where I'm talking to you guys about the events again in the next few days I'm going to have a blog post with pictures and also different articles on the exhibit that other people had done. So definitely remember to check that out. I will link it below when I have it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like videos like this where I talk about fragrances and lines of fragrances and stuff, remember to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe because it's free and I'm free. And I put out new videos every Monday through Friday and sometimes on the weekends as well. So I always have something free to watch. In any case, I hope you're all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And see you next time. Bye.